9.3, graphing square root functions. Your objective today is you're going to be graphing a square root function, and you're going to find the key features of that function, like the x-intercept, the y-intercept, um, the turning point, which is like a vertex, um, and also domain and range. With those in mind, let's look at some vocabulary. So some key features in the vertex of a square root. Well, this is first our standard form that we'll be looking at for a square root. A, the square root of x minus h plus k. Very similar to the vertex form of our quadratics. So if you remember that stuff, then you should be able to easily find a vertex because it's just the hk. Remember, h is always opposite because x always lies. h is your horizontal shift, so how much left or how much right you go. But remember, the h always lies, so you got to do the opposite. k is your vertical shift, so up or down, and that never lies. And then the A value is just if it goes downward or it always opens upward. And we'll look at that today as well. That's all those. So moving on. Some quick little vocab here. Vertex, it's just the min or max. It's the HK value. It's the highest or lowest point. X intercept is, of course, where the graph crosses the X axis. How you do that? Well, if you need to find it, all you do is plug in 0 for Y this time and solve for X. So 0 in for y, solve for x. To get the y-intercept, that's the opposite. That's where the graph crosses the y-axis. And so you're going to plug in 0 for x and then solve for y. Okay, we've done this plenty of times before. Hopefully we'll get it right again. All right. The steps to actually sketching a square root is first you're going to find the vertex. Remember the h is always opposite. So get that vertex first. That's like your starting point, basically. You're going to make a table using the values that make perfect squares, okay? I'm going to show you how we're going to do that, okay? Then we're going to plot those points and, of course, graph the line. Or it will be a curve, actually, this time, okay? So let's look at our very first example. Example one, find the key features and graph. So let's go ahead and find the key features. Oh, look at this guy. I like this guy. This guy right here, this is what we call our parent function because it is the basic form for all square roots, which is just the square root of x. So it really could if you identify this as your parent function. So if I want to find the min or max, here it's going to be a min, so they've already told you that. So the vertex, basically, remember that is the hk value. So if I write my form underneath it, which I will, a, the square root of x minus h plus k, I was able to squeeze in there, X is not telling me nothing, so that means the H is zero, and there is no K value outside, so that means it's also zero. So there's our minimum or our vertex. So we want to get some other key features, then we'll graph this, because we might as well. The X intercept we talked about, you're going to plug in zero for Y and solve for X. Well, remember, F of X right here is really just a Y variable, so we're going to have zero equals the square root of x, and then we're going to solve like we did before. Well, is a radical by itself? Yes, it is. I'm going to box it and show it. Yep. Then we're, of course, going to then square both sides. And what is 0 squared? Well, it's also still 0. It's very unique about the parent function, so very unique. To find the y-intercept, this is where you plug in 0 for x, and you're going to solve for y. So I'm going to take my function y equals the square root of x. I'm going to plug in a 0 for x. And what's the square root of 0? Well, the square root of 0 is still 0. So really all of these are the same, which doesn't help us out. Domain and range. Well, let's get this graph. Let's get this first graph and then do it. So we talked about making a table. So we're going to make my table over here, and we're going to actually graph this guy now. That'll be all we found the key features. And they all have to be the same one, which is fine. We know the vertex is 0, 0, so we're going to start off right there. Then what I'm going to do is just put in perfect square x values. So if I put in a 1, well, what's the square root of 1? We're going to figure it out. So we plug it in. What's the square root of 1? It's 1. I'm going to put in 4 because I want perfect square root values. I could put 2, but I'm going to get decimals. I want to do perfect square values, which is usually up 1, up 3, I think, is how the pattern goes. We'll find that out. We'll keep doing some more of these. And what's the square root of 4? 2. Now i got these points. Plot them. I'll plot them in blue. 0, 0, which is my vertex, my x-intercept, and my y-intercept. We got 1, 1, and then we got 4, 2. 
And these shoot off like sideways rockets. Like so. There is our graph. Now we can get our domain and range. The domain for these and the range for these have a constriction always. Your domain starts off with the x value of your vertex. So my vertex was 0, comma, 0. So what was the x value? 0. So my name starts at 0, and then since the arrow keeps going right, it goes to positive infinity. The range, same idea. It's going to start out at the y value on my vertex, which is 0, and it's also going to go to positive infinity. And this is because this graph opens upward that it's going to go to positive infinities on both of those. All right, let's look at number two. That was a mouthful. Let's go ahead and get through this. So our vertex, let's go y equals a, the square root of x minus h plus k. Well, the a value is positive, so we know it's going to open upward, just like the last one. h is the opposite of the inside, so it's not a positive 9, it's a negative 9. And k is just a negative 2. To find the x-intercept, we're going to plug in 0 for y and solve. So we're going to set this basically equal to 0. And solve. Oh, we did this already before. We're going to add 2 to both sides. Now I got the square root of x plus 9 is equal to 2. Square root's by itself, so we square both sides. We're going to get x plus 9 equals 4 minus 9 on both sides, and we get x equals a negative 5. So that'll be a negative 5, comma, 0. Now we're going to get our y-intercept. When you get the wire set, you just plug in 0 for x and solve for y. So we're going to have the square root of 0 plus 9 minus 2. Well, 0 plus 9 is 9. Square root of 9 minus 2, which would be 3 minus 2, which gives us a value of 1. Now let's get these graphed. I think we have enough points here that we could probably actually get this graph here, but just using these three right here. But you can always just start your table off with your vertex. Negative 2, negative, or negative 9, negative 2, blah. And then I want to put in perfect square values, which is a little bit difficult because I got to make sure I have a perfect square underneath here. So I do think we can go up 1, and I think it's up 3 is the pattern. Yes, that will work. So up 1, up 3. So I plug in a negative 8 here. So then again, that's just evaluating this negative 8 plus 9 minus 2. You might need some work on the side. This is going to be a square root of 1 minus 2, which is 1 minus 2, which gives you a negative 1. And then if I put a negative 5 in there, square root of negative 5 plus 9 minus 2, that gives me a square root of 4 minus 2, which is 2 minus 2, which is 0. Hmm, there's a pattern on this side. That's pretty crazy. If you go up 1, up 3. Now you got all those points. We even got these extra points here to graph, which we will. And we'll get those done. So let's see. Minimum, negative 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Way over here. Oh, nope. That's, that's not negative 9, 2. That's negative 9, 0. So that's negative 9, negative 2 right here. Then we got negative 5, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have negative 8, 1. Or negative 8, negative 1. And we also have our wire step of 1. So this graph starts over here and then follows this path along here. Since it does open up the domain again, we're going to look at our vertex here, which is negative 9 comma negative 2. The x value starts off our domain. So we're going from, oops, close bracket, negative 9 to positive infinity. The range starts out our y, or the y value starts out our range. So we're going from negative 2 to positive infinity. And again, we're going to positive infinity on the range because this graph is going upwards. This arrow right here is going to the right and also going up. Okay, so if we were going down, it will be a little bit different on that range. The domain will be the same. There's all the stuff we got. Let's continue moving on. Example 3. Here we go. You know what? I'm going to have you do this one because this one's very similar to example 2. Yeah, it is. So you're going to do this on your own. So go ahead and fill out all of these key features of example 3 and graph the function. Go ahead and pause the video now. Pause. So here's all the correct key features and the correct graph for number 3. So we found our minimum to be negative 4, negative 2. We plug that into our table. 
at the very beginning because we're going to write it first. Then it was up one here and then up three. And then, of course, this pattern on the right will ensue the way it does, which is nice. So it makes it quick, the graph these. Uh, we found our x-intercept by plugging in 0 for y and then solve for x, which happened to be also 0, which is nice. But it meant our y-intercept was going to be the same thing because that's our origin and that's what happens. We plugged in 0 for x, solved for y, got that to be 0. And then our domain and range are these values here using that vertex to start them off. All right. Next one up, number four. Now we finally have a negative value in front. I love it, finally. So, again, I'm going to write my general form right in front of it, or above it, actually. So I can get my h and my k value really quickly. It looks like it's going to be a negative 1, negative 9, because remember, x is always lie. This is negative now here, so we're going to have our graph opening down like this. I'll show you that in a bit. So let's actually get the table right now and get that out of the way. Why not? So we're going to put that vertex first. We're going to go up 1 from negative 1, which is 0, then up 3 to get positive 3, and then this should ensue the pattern. Um, it probably won't actually this time because we're going 3 here. So actually, you know what? That's not going to work, but this will work. Plug it in 0 here. What 0 plus 1 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1 times negative 3 minus 9 is a negative 12. So actually, we're going to go up by 3 here instead of by 1. So the A value actually is going to go up and actually going down. So this will be negative 15. Again, to get these values, you're just plugging in these x values into the equation. Something we've done before. Okay? So if you need to see the work, well, raise your hand. I'll show it to you. X-intercept. Again, remember, that's where you make the y 0. So we're going to set this equation here equal to 0 and solve. This is the one more meteor one to solve, but we did solve these already before. We're going to move the 9 over first. We get negative 3 parentheses x plus 1 equals 9. We're going to then divide by negative 3 on both sides to get the radical by itself. So we get the square root of x plus 1 equals a negative 3. And then we're going to square both sides. And to tell you the truth, I don't think this is going to cross the y-axis because, and you know what, there is none. And we can actually stop right here because we talked about this before when we have extraneous solutions. When we have a radical equal to a negative, that is an extraneous solution. Which means this graph will not cross the x-axis. And it won't. You'll see why here when we graph it. Y-intercept, though we can find that, and we actually had it by actually doing it here. But again, to find the y-intercept, you're going to, of course, go negative 3, square root of 0 plus 1 minus 9. Because you plug in 0 and 4x, and you're going to solve for y. And when you do that, I believe 1, negative 3, you get negative 12 when this equates out. All right. So let's get this graphed right now. we got the points right here. So let's get that negative 1, negative 9 way down here. And then this is unfortunate for this graph. We're going to have to go off it because we got to go to 0, negative 12. So this is t negative 10, negative 11, negative 12 would be right down here. We're going to extend this. So that's going to be right here. So we got this first point, this point, and then 3, negative 15. Holy moly, it's going to be way over here. This graph is a little ridiculous how it is, but it will be opening. Oops, I did that wrong. Let's make that a little bit better. This will be opening down like so. The vertex, of course, was that negative 1, negative 9. It's going to help us with our domain and range because those x and y value are going to start off our domain and range. So our domain does start at negative 1, and it will go to positive infinity because the domain will always do that for these. But the range this time does start at negative 9, which is the y value of the vertex. But since it's going down, it's never going to go up. So we actually have to reverse this because the lowest value would be negative infinity here now. And we're going to go up to negative 9. So it's going to flip when it opens down. Oh, we forgot to put our x-intercept in there. Oh, that's right, because it was extraneous, because it doesn't exist. And you can see this graph does not cross my x-axis. So that's why it is an extraneous solution. Moving on to number five. We'll do one more here together. Here we go. So again, let's put that beautiful general form above it. Hopefully you're getting tired of it and can find your vertex pretty easy like I can. Negative four, negative six. Immediately make my table. Putting that in front. This value right here is positive, which means I'm going to count by two on this side, but I need to go up one up three and then it's count by twos 
and we're going up. So then that would be negative 2, I believe. Yeah. Again, if you don't believe me, always double check and plug these values in here to x right here to find out what their output is. And use your calculator is what I would do. It's easy. Come on. X intercept, of course, we're going to set the equation equal to 0 and solve 4x. Of course, we're letting a y equal 0 now this time. I just put a y there and a y. It's supposed to be a 4. I think I was talking about it, so that's my fault. And then solve. But again, it's just like the last one. we got to move the 6 over first by adding. We get 2 radical x plus 4 equals positive 6. We're then going to divide both sides by 2, which means that I get radical x plus 4 equals 3. Then this is where I square the radical to get it out, which now I get x plus 4 equals 9 minus a 4 over, and we now have x equals 5. There's our x-intercept. To get the y-intercept, we're going to plug in a 0 for x and solve for y, which I think we already got on our table. We got it to be negative 2, but let's just find out for sure. 2 parentheses. 0 plus 4, and then minus 6. 0 plus 4 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 minus 6 is a negative 2. So we actually did the pattern right up here. That's cool. Let's get that graphed. Negative 4, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 3, 4. Negative 2, 0. And then that's enough points all we need. Start and then rocket it off. Now, actually, you know what? We do have another point we can use, and let's get this a little bit better. Why not? We do have it. And that is, of course, our x intercept of 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So right here, I forgot about that. We do have the extra points, so we can actually get this graph of four points now. And then so forth and so on. There you go. Got a graph. Let's get our domain and range. Again, use your vertex. It's easy as peasy. So we know the domain's going to start at negative 4 and go to positive infinity because it always starts with the x coordinate of the vertex and goes to positive infinity. That's how square roots work. And in the range, it's going up. So it will also start at its y value, which is negative 6, and go to positive infinity as well because it is opening up because the a value is positive. All right. Number 6 is yours to do. Go ahead and pause this video and try this one out. Use the others for help. It's your time to shine. Try it out. Pause. Is correct all key features and the graph for number six. Minimum being eight, negative three, because the x lied. Our x intercept, we set the equation equal to zero, solved for x like we've done before, got to be 17, comma zero. The y intercept, we plugged in zero, and then as soon as we were working it out, we got the square root of a negative, and we can't take the square root of a negative. We can take the cube root of a negative, but not the square root of a negative. So it's not going to cross the y axis. We got our domain and range using our vertex. It's an open up to help with that. Um, and then when we graphed it using our table, we found out, yeah, you're right. It does not cross the y-axis. doesn't even hit it. So we were right when we found out that it's not going to work here. Last one up, yours to do. Time for you to shine. It has a negative in front, but you know what? I'm going to work this together with you. If you think you're good to go, go ahead and pause this. But I'm going to work this because of that negative in front. And some kids have struggled with the whole... Um, domain and range and stuff. So vertex opposite, negative 4, same as k, positive 3. Make my table so I can get this graph right away. Let's just graph it right away. Now the pattern again on the left-hand side for the x's is you go up 1, up 3. If you want the perfect squares to go in here so you get nice good values or else you're graphing decimals. doesn't matter. Just give me a sketch. I'm just trying to make the math easier. So and then this pattern on this side is what your a value is. So this is negative 1, I'm going to go down 1. So this is going to go down 1 to 2, and this is going to go down 1 to 1. And again, we can check it out. If I plug in negative 3 here, negative 3 plus 4 is 1, square root of 1 is 1, times a negative 1 is negative 1, and negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Works. Okay? Plug it in. Use your calculator. Work smarter, not harder. Now we got that out of the way, let's get our x-intercept. So we're going to have negative and I'm going to put the negative 1 there because people forget about it. The square root of x plus 4 plus 3. And we're going to set this equation equal to 0 because that's the y value now. We're going to solve for x. So first we're going to minus 3 on both sides. We have negative 1 parentheses, or not parentheses, um, square root of x plus 4 equals negative 3. Then we're going to, of course, divide both sides by negative 1 because we got to get that negative in front. We have the square root of x plus 4 equals a positive 3, which means we're going to have an x-intercept. We're going to square both sides, 
we get x plus 4 equals 9, minus 4, minus 4. We're going to have x equals a positive 5. So there is our x-intercept. Now to get our y-intercept, we simply just plug in a 0 for x and solve. So that's just a negative uh, root of 0 plus 4 plus 3. Well, 0 plus 4 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 times a negative 1 is negative 2. A negative 2 plus 3 is a 1, which is what we actually got right here. We actually got it, which is cool. Plot those points. Negative 4, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3 up here. Then we're going to have negative 3, negative 2. So negative 3, positive 2, my bad. And then 0, 1. And then we also have an extra step of 5, 0. We can do that one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's pretty much a lot of good points there. We can graph this really good. I'll graph it red. And this one's opening down this time. Again, we should have identified that it was opening down in our brains because of the negative value for the A. Then our domain and range. So remember, the domain and range always use the vertex, just depending on how to use it, depending if you open up or down. So since my X is negative 4, I'm going from negative 4 to positive infinity because that's how the domain always works. But on the other, my Y value here now is positive 3, but it's opening down which means this is going to negative infinity on my y values. So then I need to start this off from negative infinity to that y value of 3. Got to work backwards. All right, there's everything you need to know about graphing square roots. Now it's your time to shine and go ahead and do that perfect Google slide practice, which should have been here, but I totally forgot to put it here again. But bam, 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 9.3, start. Go ahead, be amazing, because you're amazing. Have a great day.